Hey, what is going on guys? We are here with Wolves of Rome and this is a paid promotional video. So shout outs to them for helping and supporting the channel. So heading over to their facts section, we can see that Wolves of Rome is a CNFT card game built on Cardano. Jumping right into what is Wolves of Rome? Well, it's going to be a card game built on Cardano and there will be competitive PVP battles. So you will play against your friends and you'll likely be able to play against AI as well. In this game, players can battle, collect, compete, and build a collection of cards to empower their deck. Wolves of Rome is all about picking a commander as well and then building a deck around them. In this competitive multiplayer format, you can choose a legendary unit to serve as your commander and build the rest of your deck around their faction identity. Commanders are all legendary cards that define the factions you can use to build your deck. At any moment, you can pay your commander's resource cost, and we'll get to this later, to put it into play. If the commander dies or gets destroyed, you can pay two resource cost to revive it and be able to pay its resource cost again to put it back into play. Moving over to deck building, you can only have 30 cards in a deck, and you can only have three copies of a unique card in your deck. So when battling, you're both going to start at 30 HP and you're both going to start out with a single resource point. And at the end of each round, you gain one more maximum resource point. You use these resource points to play all the different types of cards, so units, landmarks, spells, to defeat your opponent by reducing his health to zero. Now before I talk about their NFTs, if you do want to become an alpha tester, you can head over to their Discord channel, join alpha testing, and they will reach out to you and help start the onboarding process. Also, if you do sign up to be an alpha tester, you can challenge one of these members of the team, and if you win, you are awarded a whitelist. Now heading over and checking out their NFT, these will be a PFP NFT, but they are stacked with utility. The price will be 180 ADA, and there is only 2,000 wolves for season one. The mint will take place on the 29th of July at 8 p.m. UTC. So with these Empire NFT drops, what you're getting is a pre-game launch NFT. What it will offer you are whitelist spots, account rewards, collectibles, events, and saving the best for last, redeemable items on game launch. Going through the rest of the facts page, will these NFTs work in-game? No, these NFTs are separate from our in-game cards. How many will there be? There will be 2,000. However, for the other supply for the following drops, that has yet to be decided. There will be a total of six drops. Also, if you are whitelisted, the sale will start on July 28th. So now heading over to NFT reveals, they do have quite a bit of sneak peeks. And they're these NFTs, they're 3D, and they kind of just sway back and forth, left to right, and then right to left. But they all look really well done. They all have, it looks like, either an item in the mouth, or a backdrop, and then a background. So this one in the back has some guns, and then in his mouth has a cigar. This one, what is that, a joint? Looks like maybe a joint or a blunt. And uh, he's got some katanas. But... I mean, overall, the art just looks really good. This eye, it's like glowing eye. That'll probably be a specific trait. These, they're calling these grape. So I guess that's just the color. But regardless of whatever they're calling it or doing, it just looks really good in my opinion. So the next thing I wanted to do was check out their team. And their team is doxxed and they're also huge. They have what, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18 team members. So I agree 100% with needing this many people for a game. You know, you have one here, game producer, you have a CEO, you have the lore and art director, because yes, you do need art for the game. You have the COO and marketing, because you need to market the game. You have the head of business development. Then you have an advisor. Then you have project manager, game director, lead programmer, two other developers, animators, you know, they've got pretty much everything covered. You even have composers, so they have their own sounds and music. Also, with these bigger teams does come a larger price, and that's likely why it's 180 ADA for these NFTs, because they do have to pay everybody, and even that isn't going to pay everybody for very long. So it's kind of one of those things that you gotta think about. If you wanna have a really cheap project, but maybe it takes three years to four years to actually build what you want, then that's cool. You can get a cheap project, maybe it goes down even cheaper. You can get a few of them, whatever. But this project is probably something that will develop a little bit quicker and have something ready sooner, but you're going to have to pay a larger price for that. So now we'll go check out their roadmap. And this is where they're going to come out with their rewards for their alpha testers, do their NFT drop, and then they're going to have a beta launch of their play and earn ecosystem. They're going to do updates and upgrades and then continue marketing. 
For quarter four, they're going to work on their mobile development. They're then going to do their EOY audit, 300 unique high quality arts finished for the year, host their first tournament event, and new empires will be released. And then in 2023, ongoing card releases, a growing world with deep lore, story and campaign modes, tournaments and contests, rotating game modes, community events, and launch beta market version one. So now I'm gonna speak a little bit about their game. So over here is the health bar where this red gem is. So this person on the bottom has 29 health. He lost one health bar because everybody starts with 30. And then over here on the right side with the blue, the left is your mana and the right is your spell mana. So the mana that you can cast on your spells. And right now these show you who is in attack mode and who is defending. So right now this person is attacking and this person is defending. You can actually see that by this person dragging up on the monster and then attacking him and killing him. Now it talks about how every move matters. And of course, because this is a strategy based game. So just know that going into this game, if you're not somebody who's good with strategy, maybe you're holding because you just believe in the project and you wanna flip. But if you are a gamer and you wanna try your luck, you will need to have a bit of strategy going into it. Finishing up the board explanation, where 1.3 is right here, this is where your deck will go. And then over here at 1.9 is all of the cards that you have lined up that are available to use. And then where 1.10 is, is the battleground. So this is where your enemy's monsters are, and this is where your monsters are. And then you also have your hand at 1.11. This 1.4 right here is where your commander will be. And remember your commander is going to be based on a faction and the faction will be based off of what cards you'd probably want to use. But then we also get to 1.8 and that's what you're going to click. It is the action button. So once you've chosen to attack, you finally hit the green button and it goes through with all of your actions. You can also click this if you would just like to skip your turn. So cards also get their own attributes. So in the top left, we have the amount of mana that this has. In the bottom left, we have the strength of its attack. In the bottom right, we have the amount of health that this has. And in the top right is its faction. There will also be their dollar sign WOR, which is their war token, and this will give you governance. So owning this token will give players the right to vote on various areas of development. They're also doing something very interesting. They are not trying to force NFTs onto anybody who hasn't played yet, and they think that this will be a better way for mass adoption. Instead of pushing something in their face, they kind of let them make their own decision as to whether they'd want it or not, but they can still play. And I actually really like this approach. So right here it says, this means that players are free to play Wolves of Rome without ever being exposed to NFTs and the blockchain. Instead, we let the players decide which of their assets they would like to mint and transfer to a marketplace. This also keeps the cost down for the players as they are not constantly paying minting fees every time they buy or earn new cards. Via in-game tips, notifications, and tutorials, we will guide new players to how they can mint and trade their collection in an easily digestible format. So this is more of a play and earn is what they're calling it instead of a play to earn. In Wolves of Rome, players will be rewarded with an in-game currency named Glorium. This is a purely digital game currency with no connection to the blockchain. Players earn Glorium simply by playing the game, winning matches, competing in tournaments, and completing missions. Glorium has one primary use case and that is buying cards. This means that players are effectively earning cards by playing our game and not some cryptocurrency full of empty promises. Players are then free to mint any cards in their collection, transfer them to their connected wallet, and trade them on either our own marketplace or a secondary supporting marketplace. So a lot of my thoughts are the only reason why you would want to mint one of the cards is if it's worth more than the mint cost which I'm assuming most cards maybe at first will be, but if this does hit mass adoption, and let's say a super common card is minted every single time somebody creates a new account, then that card's not gonna be worth very much. So I could see people only wanting to mint the better cards. And then another thing too is that they are coming out with updates, so the game will always be evolving, new cards, new strategies. So I think it'll always have incentive for you to grind and earn Glorium. 
Uh, that won't necessarily make you money up front, but if you do grind enough Glorium, you wait for a new season to come out maybe, and then you spend a lot of money on your packs, and then you get a rare one, you might come up on a decent amount of beta. Remember everybody, none of this is financial advice. I'm just a dude on the internet stating opinions and talking about NFTs that are highly speculative. So do your own research, yada yada yada, but most importantly, get outside, see your family, see your friends. We're here to make more money so that we can spend more time with them. Until next time guys, peace. I get it like a G, but it never came easy. You got me coughing up a lung, I wish I rap like Wheezy. I keep my pace, so I'm sorry that I'm breezy. Keep my sneaks laced, cause I can't afford Yeezys. I don't want the gold, give me BTC. Y'all be acting crazy. I